Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. Today, we are going to explore what President Nelson said in the historic General Conference of April 2020. He said, nothing shall be withheld from the saints. And as I followed the footnotes, I found that it was connected to the promise in Doctrine and Covenants that in the last dispensation, set times shall be revealed. So it's actually pretty interesting because in our most recent general conference, Sister Dennis admonished us to study the talks of our prophet, including the beautiful teachings in the footnotes of his talks, which most conference talks have. So in this talk, President Nelson, he teaches that nothing shall be withheld. And if you look in Doctrine and Covenants, it talks about this in reference to the sun, moon, stars, appointed days, glories, set times, and days, months, years revealed. So let's look at the exact quotes. He said, regardless of where you live or what your circumstances are, the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. And God's prophet, Joseph Smith, is your prophet. He was foreordained before the foundation of the earth to be the prophet of this last dispensation, when nothing shall be withheld from the saints. Revelation continues to flow from the Lord during this ongoing process of restoration. If you look at this footnote, number three, it takes you to Doctrine and Covenants, section 121, verses 28 to 31, which reads, A time to come in the which nothing shall be withheld. Whether there be one God or many gods, they shall be manifest. All thrones and dominions, principalities and powers shall be revealed and set forth forth upon all who have endured valiantly for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and also if there be bounds set to the heavens or to the seas, or to the dry land, or to the sun, moon, or stars, all the times of their revolutions, all the appointed days, months, and years, and all the days of their days, months, and years, and all their glories, laws, and set times shall be revealed in the days of the dispensation of the fullness of times. And then we have President Oaks in his talk titled Preparation for the Second Coming. He says, the Lord has declared, he that feareth me shall be looking forth for the great day of the Lord to come, even for the signs of the coming of the Son of Man. Signs that will be shown in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. And that is quoted from Doctrine and Covenants, section 45, 39 to 40. The Savior taught this in the parable of the fig tree whose tender new branches give a sign of the coming of summer. So likewise, when the elect shall see the signs of his coming, they shall know that he is near even at the doors. So in October 2022 General Conference, there is some more footnotes gold. So in President Nelson's talk, Overcome the World and Find Rest, he says, But my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns with power and great glory. And if you look at the footnotes for that quote, it connects to Matthew 1, verse 36, that says, Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then he continues, 
he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. So how awesome that he talks about coming days and the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then we also have on top of that, our beloved prophet in his very first talk after he was called as prophet in April of 2018, he quotes Elder Maxwell who taught, to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it is clear that the father and the son are giving away the secrets of the universe. That was in his footnotes, and Sister Dennis just told us to study his footnotes. So join me as we look a little bit closer and dig a little bit deeper to learn about the sign of the Son of Man. Joseph Smith said the sign of the Son of Man will be small at first, but gradually increase. And in the Joseph Smith translation of Matthew 1, verse 26, it says, for as the light of the morning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, and covereth the whole earth, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So we have this analogy that it starts out small and gradually over time increases. We also have in LDS Living, it says what the sign of the Son of Man at the second coming is. And the quote from Joseph Smith, it says, in a manner similar to the sun, this sign will be small at first, but will gradually increase until it is all in a blaze and every eye sees it. We also have a quote from Joseph Smith saying that the saints should not be unaware of the signs, even if the world says it is a mere planet or comet. So he said, what will the world do? They will say it is a planet, a comet, etc. But the Son of Man will come as the sign of the coming of the Son of Man, which will be as the light of the morning cometh out of the east. But to the saints, he says, ye are not of the night nor of the darkness that that day should come upon you unawares. So in the scriptures, it says that it will come upon them as the thief or unawares. But they are they who are the children of darkness or night but to the saints. He said, we should not be unaware of the signs. So let's take a look at signs in the heavens, how they are in likeness of things on the earth. So in Joseph Smith translation of Revelation 12, I find it interesting that Joseph Smith changed this aspect of the first verse of Revelation 12. So the original King James Version of Revelation 12, verse 1, reads like this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And now the Joseph Smith translation, it starts out in a completely different way. It says, and there appeared a great sign in heaven in the likeness of things on the earth. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So it's highlighted that this sign is in the likeness of things on the earth. Now, before we delve more into that thought, I want to just quickly point out that today is June 24th, 2024. I've always had big feelings about 2024. And I feel like now it's June. We're at the six month mark and it is time for a six month reflection on signs in the heaven as we've seen them all the way up through 2024. So first of all, an interesting note about today is that it is the exact due date 
of the Revelation 12 2023 sign. So this was the sign that was a depiction of the woman giving birth to the minor planet child. And this was during the Feast of Trumpets of last year. So this is exactly 280 days, which is the common days of gestation. And today is also Orthodox Pentecost Monday. So we've talked about Pentecost a lot. And yesterday was Pentecost Sunday. Today is the official Pentecost Monday. And it is also John the Baptist Day. If you don't know what John the Baptist Day, it is observed annually on June 24th. And the Nativity of John the Baptist is a high-ranking feast kept in the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Church, Anglicanism, and Lutheranism. So just an interesting note, and you can see here at the bottom that from Monday, September 18th, 2023, this is Feast of Trumpet Times. If you add 280 days, which is 40 weeks or nine months, your typical average gestation time, the result is today, Monday, June 24th, 2024. So a very fitting day to take a look at this concept. So when I first felt prompted to start this YouTube channel, it really started as a prompting and I actually really hated the idea, dreaded the idea, I should say, and struggled so endlessly just giving excuses in my conversations with God why it must not really be an actual prompting. And I feel like God gave me many assurances to press forward, but one of the many tipping points was when I distinctly heard this phrase in my mind, the way the Spirit often speaks to me. And it was the phrase, do it for my glory. Now, this was not a phrase that would generally come to my mind, and I immediately recognized it as the Spirit. And I would later discover this awesome scripture that says, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sheweth his handiwork day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalms 19, one to three. And as I delved into scripture, I've discovered countless writings about God's signs in the sun, moon, stars. In Luke 21, 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And Joseph Smith clarifies even further with the sign of the Son of Man about comets. Now, this discovery piqued my interest in programs like Stellarium, which allow anyone to track the names and positions of minor planets or asteroids at any given time. With promises of new signs and wonders in the last days, it seems feasible that God could use these modern tools to display his power over every detail of the universe in this final dispensation. The question that has occupied my thoughts since I first encountered this possibility nine months ago when I saw Virgo, which is, here we go, often seen as a symbol of the church or bride of Christ depicted with a comet named child in the birthplace, and then so many other scripture-themed named comets in that region, is just wondering whether this is a glimpse of God's hand in the universe. Well, the scriptures teach us that all things testify of Jesus Christ and every aspect of existence reflects the creation and glory of God. Viewing these phenomena as celestial art or symbols seems fitting. I've always found it curious that the Big Dipper, sun, moon, and stars are displayed on the Salt Lake and Nauvoo temples. Now, each of us can discern, as with all symbols, how much of it reflects God's signs versus our own interpretations. If the idea of God's involvement in celestial events 
causes you some hesitation, it may be due to the historical misuse of astrology, which may claim elevation above God, worship of those entities, or determination of our choices. But it's prudent to remember in these explorations that signs follow and confirm truth and principles we know by the Spirit to be true through scriptures, prophets, and apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, in my mind, the way I view it is, at its best, these signs reinforce our testimonies within the bounds of doctrine, and at its simplest, they serve as beautiful celestial art that enriches our remembrance of scriptural stories and binds this faith closer to our everyday lives. So to be clear, I do not claim perfect interpretation, but join me as we explore this idea and my discoveries and prepare to be surprised by a series of seven planetary depictions in the sky that seem to perfectly be timed to mimic the likeness of events on the earth down to the intimate detail. So we are going to explore these seven signs. So Pleiades, or called the seven sisters or seven stars, is mentioned seven times in the Bible. So the Pleiades, also known as the seven sisters, it's a star cluster that's considered one of the most beautiful signs in the night sky. The cluster is made up of seven prominent stars. So the seven times the seven stars or Pleiades specifically is mentioned in the Bible. We have Job 9, 9, Job 38, 31, Amos 5, 8, Revelation 1, 16, Revelation 120, Revelation 21, and Revelation 31. I'm not going to read all of those, but I will read Job 3831, which says, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? And in Amos 58, it says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. You can see a depiction on the right of, about what I talked about in the last video, so you can review that for more details. But yeah, so today is 280 days, the exact gestation or nine-month time. So let's review this concept of minor planet signs in the heavens. So at this time, we had this Revelation 12 sign. And at the time, I talked about if you count that first Revelation sign in 2017, that this would be year six or seven, depending on if you count that first year as a zero or a one. And it was just fascinating that you had a comet called Child right in the birthplace of the woman during Feast of Trumpets. And you had these other names around there, including Nelson Eric, so our prophet, President Nelson, and Eric means soul leader. We had the asteroids Israel and Temple and Olive Burn. We also had the United Nations and Crimea pointing out important events that have been taking place. We also had the word Yeshua and Miriam at the feet as if they were ready to catch the child that is giving birth right next to the moon and all of these other names that you see here. But this is was just the beginning of this idea. And so let's take a look at this concept really quickly because this is pretty fascinating. I mean, this is a pretty big, if this were a mere coincidence, it's a pretty big coincidence that on May 19th of 2024, this was Christian Pentecost Day, 40 days after the eclipse. And on that day, the Iran president, Raisi, was killed in a helicopter crash 
after attending the dam inauguration in Azerbaijan. So many suspected that this was an assassination. As you can see from this Washington Times and many other headlines, it says Iran President Raisi's death, accident or quote unquote accident. And you can see right here, we have all of these planets and the sun clustered on top of each other. We have the sun, Jupiter, Venus, Uranus, all on top of each other and right in the middle we have the name of this president of iran the root word which is rice rice and that means chief or leader and it was president ricey that was killed and we have the exact location so if you look up azerbaijan now that's a pretty unique word and to have that stacked together in this cluster too is pretty compelling in and of itself but then right next to it so we're looking this is Taurus and we have the horns and right next to it you have the word Iran or Irani so you have Iran you have Azerbaijan the exact location in this cluster and then you also have the word Murden, which Murden actually means murderousness. So this root word of murder, which is disturbing, but also seems to fit in with the common theme of this day. So I can show you live so you can see exactly what it looks like. This is the picture that I was able to create through cutting and pasting it to the locations, but so you can see it exactly live on Stellarium. Let me show you really quickly. You can go to Stellarium yourself and check this out. Here in the corner, you can see the date is 5-19-2024, Christian Pentecost, and Right here, you have this name, Azerbaijan. Now, it's not perfectly spelled, but it's pretty darn close. And then, if we look up Iran, have this comet called Irani right here. Then, if we look up name Raisi, here we go. The word that is closest to ricey, rice, the same root word, you can see it is right here where the sun and Jupiter are stuck on top of each other. And if you were to look up the word murder, the closest word, root word murdin, is right there too. Odd, right? Interesting. All right, so for our second possible sign in the heavens, we have October 7th, 2023, the day that Israel was attacked. So we've talked a lot on this channel about how Parley Pratt is connected to the Revelation 12 sign and this idea of the likeness of things on the earth and the October 7th, 2023 abomination of desolation set up day warning so he wrote the book the voice of warning that came out of the salt lake temple time capsule and it talked about this concept of the abomination of desolation and the day the church revealed this was on the actual hebrew abomination of desolation day and he talks about eclipses and signs in the heavens and other things that got us closely watching October 7th. And then we saw that Israel was attacked. So if we look at what is happening in Stellarium on this day. It's pretty interesting. We have the sun highlighting the arm and hand of the woman Virgo. Generally, a woman is a symbol in the scriptures for the church.
you see Mercury here as well. And in the woman's hand is the minor planet or asteroid called Israel. You also have the word media. The Medes are uh, basically, if you trace that back, it is linked to Iran of today. And the people that attacked, they called it an all oxa or a storm. And we have the word storm right here. We also have Mars sandwiching all of this. And then on top of that, so in my mind, it was this Parley Pratt warning that turned me on to this idea of the October 7th abomination of desolation setup idea. And look here in Sagittarius at the point and tip of this arrow area here in the constellation. Now keep in mind, the picture is not exact. It's just a general depiction of what is happening in this constellation. You can see right at the tip of this constellation, we have the word rat. And right here, if you look at the constellation, it actually seems to kind of have this arrow pointing to this middle area and we have the word Iran. So let me show you really quickly live on Stellarium so you can see it exactly. So here you can see Israel in the hand of the woman. You can see the storm. Media, meaning Iran, and also you can see there are only two asteroids with the word Iran in it. And this one is Iran Manesh here at the top of this area, along with Pratt. There you go, shooting the arrow. And I think Pratt really hit the center of that target with his voice of warning. So if you have not read it, I recommend it. It's a good read. All right, so sign number three. We had in the world spires placed on top of the Salt Lake Temple and the Paris Notre Dame Cathedral on the same day. So on February 13th, 2024, this was in the news, a big spire milestone and unveiling day with celebrations for the Salt Lake Temple and Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. So Catholics are the largest Christian church on the planet. This was a big day for so many religious people. You can see the news headlines. It says Notre Dame's new spire revealed in new milestone. And same day, Salt Lake City News, about 800 construction team members and special guests cheered as the final steel spire support was hoisted into place atop the Salt Lake Temple on February 13th. So what really caught my eye with this was after seeing on October 7th at the tip of Sagittarius, it really stuck out to me that this constellation to just the average person who honestly, I don't know that much about the constellations, but if you just look at it, it looks like a temple or tabernacle with a spire on top. This is the only constellation that looks something like a temple or tabernacle. And what do you know? There again, at the top of the spire was the word Francis. Now this asteroid was specifically named after Pope Francis. So this was, again, a big day for one of the largest Christian churches. And to top that off, it was a big day for the Salt Lake Temple. And again, here at the tip of this arrow, you have Nelson Eric. Remember, Eric means soul ruler. So President Nelson and this name, Russell, Mark. So when I just think about Mark, I think about the temple 
and symbols and marks and our prophet, President Nelson. So it's sandwich, sandwiched with the names Russell and Nelson. Very interesting. And then right next to it, you have the asteroids that are named Israel and Temple. So Temple He. So let me show you on Stellarium what this looks like. All right, so you can see this is February 13th, 2024. The spires were placed on the Salt Lake Temple and the Notre Dame Cathedral. And you have Francis right here at the tip top of the spire of the temple. And you have or tabernacle or cathedral. And something that Jared on Christian Homestead has brought up is the concept that in the millennium, some of these cathedrals might be transformed into, transitioned into temples. So let's look up Nelson. So Nelson Eric right here near the arrow, we have Israel. And we also have kind of in this area of Venus and Mars. And we also have word temple or temple. There we go. So pretty cool. Okay, so possible sign in the heavens number four. This is hands down the best. And you definitely have to stick with me and listen to the story of what happened concurrently. As I discovered this, this one just blew me away. This is what just, <laughs> just blew me my mind out of the water. So I'm not sure why I didn't think of this sooner to look at Stellarium at what was happening on March 25th, 2024, the day that the Kirtland Temple opened. So, man, I've just, I really think that this was a big day and a big day as far as symbolism goes for the church. So the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints acquires and it opens the Kirtland temple on this day. And so just to give you a little background to me, the most miraculous part about this is actually the process of how I find these things. Um, so as I was looking for this, the thought just popped into my head that wouldn't it be amazing if on this day, at the tip top spire of the temple that depiction the constellation that looks like the temple if it was the name jesus and i thought if that's the case then it just confirms everything so i looked at stellarium and sure enough on the kirtland temple opening day at the tip top of this sagittarius constellation that looks like a temple at the top of the spire is the name Yeshua. So the name Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. And if you look up the names of these asteroids, there's no minor planet or asteroid that is called Jesus or anything close to Christ or any form. The only name that is close to Jesus Christ is this Yeshua asteroid and there it was right exactly at the tip and look at all these other names that are right here so it's interesting because Sagittarius is often depicted with wings in mythology so you have this half person half horse and a lot of times this is seen area is seen as wings and in this winged area we have the words temple Covey or Covenants, Israel, Nelson, Eric, Emma. And I looked up any words that were close to Dallin or Oaks. And there was this word Dow. So that might be a stretch, but there it is right in that area. You also have the word Phelps. 
because W.W. W. Phelps was the author of the song, The Spirit of God, that was sung at the Kirtland Temple dedication. You also have the word Moses. So this Moses Mendel, Mendel meaning wisdom. So Moses wisdom, and we know that Jesus appeared in the Kirtland Temple in 1836, but other personages that appeared include Moses. We also have right next to Moses, Miriam. And if we look at this part of the constellations, here we have a ram. And historically, this could be seen as a ram or a lamb of God. And it's pretty interesting because right in the middle, right where you would put a label, you have the word Melchior. And Melchior is the name of one of the three wise men who were able to see the signs in the heavens, looking at the stars and the planets. So we know another event that happened in the Kirtland Temple that Jesus Christ also appeared to Oliver Cowdery in the Kirtland Temple. And here at the feet of this ram, so if you think of a shofar, that is often blown in feasts and celebrations. And this day was a celebratory day to reclaim the Kirtland Temple. We have the names Young, like Brigham Young, Oliver, like Oliver Cowdery, who saw the Savior. We have Reynolds. And we know from the Kirtland Temple history that it was Reynolds Cahoon of the Kirtland Temple Committee that helped dig the trench by hand for the walls of the Lord's house. We also have the word night. Now I am a direct descendant of the Knight family. The Knight family, the also Newell Knight is recorded to have seen the face of the Savior in the temple and his calling election was made sure. And he is right on top of Jupiter here. And you also have the planet Uranus. So this is pretty awesome. And in Zechariah 9, 14, it says, And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. So this trumpet kind of linked to that idea of beast of trumpets, which in my mind is continually being connected back to these signs in the heavens in likeness of things on the earth. So let's show you really fast directly on Stellarium where these things are. So here live on Stellarium, you can see with your own eyes how exact this is. On March 25th, 2024, the day the Kirtland Temple opens, this constellation in Sagittarius that looks like a temple the spire on top is pointed directly at Yeshua, Yeshua being the Hebrew name for Jesus. Now you can see, as I type in letters, names pop up. There is no asteroid named Jesus, but there it is. Let's look up Nelson Eric. So President Nelson, who is prophet at this time, there he is. We also got some other themes related to Joseph and Emma Smith. And there is Emma, her exact name right there. And the song, The Spirit of God by W.W. W. Phelps. Look at that. And all those other asteroids right in this kind of wings area. And now here in the horned ram or lamb area, we have Melchior, the name of one of the three wise men. You have Jupiter and Uranus here highlighting this area of the feet. And we have word young, like Brigham Young. We have Night, direct ancestor, right here we have Oliver. 
right at the feet, like all over Cowdery. Pretty amazing. And there is so much more on the state of March 25th, 2024. So we are going to look at this area of Aquarius pouring out the water and Orion. And remember in the Bible, in Amos 5, 8, it says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. His glory is in the heavens. So if you look at these names, we know that Newell Knight experienced the first miracle by Joseph Smith, and John Low Butler was healed and given a healing cloak by Joseph Smith when he did the big day of healings when so many people were sick. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but look at all these names. First of all, right in the sun, we have this word Monet. Monet comes from the name Simon. You think about Simon Peter, and it translates to hearing or listen. So hearing the voice of the Lord. And what is it that we hear in these names? Well, we have the word Summa here. And we know that in the scriptures, it talks about the summum and bonum. So Summa is the same as the word summum. And it's kind of about sums up what everything is about and it is about the powers of the priesthood we have the word elijah we know that elijah appeared in the kirtland temple and look at this parade of planets we have mars saturn and venus and straight in this line we have newell as in newell height and look at where this water is pouring out the word house there is no asteroid um that says Lord or anything like that, but the word house as in house of the Lord and the blessings and powers of the priesthood are poured out upon the heads of the saints when nothing shall be withheld. And we have the name Sam. It says Sam Colson. So we think of Sam. He was the first missionary and Colson means victory of the people. And this missionary work of the people has been a victory so far. We have the name Butler. So this is a name closely linked to Miracles of Healing by Joseph Smith. And there is Pratt. Harley Pratt is always right here in the mix. And if we look at Orion in his two hands, we see Smith and Sydney. And now we know that Jesus Christ appeared to Joseph Smith in the Kirtland Temple. And we also know that Joseph and Sidney Rignan saw the heavens open. So here we are on March 25th, 2024, in this little parade of the sun, Venus, Saturn, and Mars. We have the name Newell. We also have the name Butler, have the name Elijah. So the only name that has Elijah in it, it's Elijah Mina specifically. And we also have Sam, Sam Colston or Sam, Victory of the People. And then as a label right here in the middle, we have Summa. So remember that, and we're gonna talk again about the Summum and Bonum. And in the hands of Orion, we have those who saw visions, Smith, as in Joseph Smith, and Sydney, as in Sydney Rigdon. So this experience of finding all these Kirtland Temple themed names on the day that the temple opened was pretty awesome.
I was feeling the spirit and then it got even better. So my parents, they call me and at this exact moment in time, the same morning, my parents were at the Kirtland Temple. They had traveled from Oregon to visit my brother in Indiana. They met up with family and went on a tour of the Kirtland Temple. And they were experiencing these, air quote, coincidence, Kirtland Temple miracles at the same time that I was noticing this celestial art in the heavens. So you can see these pictures that they sent me and they were able to put their hands on, hold and read this original Book of Mormon. They saw these parts of the Kirtland Temple. And let me explain to you here on this next slide. So they just happened to be there at the time that there was another member of the church who holds the original Book of Mormon given to Carolyn and John Lowe Butler. So this is actually my husband's ancestor, John Lowe Butler. And I thought it was interesting that his birthday was on the date of the eclipse, April 8, 1808. There's my 888. And from Samuel Smith, this was a book that was given from Samuel Smith. You can see in this picture how he starred his name. So the first missionary and brother of Joseph Smith. And he labeled this as a gift to Carolyn Butler. Now, this was a privately owned original Book of Mormon. And the owner, he just happened to be there at the same time. And he actually was letting the missionary at the front desk hold on to it while he toured around and was nice enough to let my parents hold it and look at it and take pictures. And you can see that this story is in there. He attached it. It says, John Lowe Butler Cloak Remnants, blessed by Joseph Smith for the healing of the sick in 1839. So the story is that Joseph Smith blessed John Butler's plaid and tweed cloak for the healing of the sick. This is also talked about in the book, My Best for the Kingdom by William Hartley. John and his wife, Carolyn, put the cloak on family members who were sick. It was passed down to John's son. When he died, it was cut into 10 pieces. Succeeding generations have cut it down further. Cloak pieces are highly prized artifacts in the Butler family. Joseph Smith only blessed two items for the healing of the sick, a handkerchief for Wilford Woodruff and this healing cloak for John Lowe Butler. As far as using objects, pieces of cloth for healing, Joseph Smith issued the first extant instruction on such healing as part of Lorenzo Snow's patriarchal blessing, which was given in the Kirtland Temple. So this is where he declared that Lorenzo Snow would have faith like that of Peter. Thy shadow shall restore the sick. The disease shall send to thee their handkerchiefs and aprons. By thy touch, their owners shall be healed. I think these were items to help boost the faith of these people so that they could heal in the same way that Joseph Smith was able to. And that's just my theory on that, as that is not a normal practice. That was a rare thing in the beginnings of the church. So the story only gets better. So as they're looking at this and the name Butler, a man walks in and they talk to him. They're just being friendly. And he introduces himself as Brother Butler. It turns out that he <laughs> is the descendant of the Butler family. So he got to view this Book of Mormon as well. And so they're having these experiences and thinking, wow, what a lucky coincidence. A great fortune that we get to be here to see this. And the man who owns it actually said that this um, article from church history is worth somewhere around $140,000. This is not a very, very rare item of history. And so as they continue their tour, my aunt brings up the fact that she is a descendant of Newell Knight. And the person giving the tour says, oh, I am too. And they find out that they both have the same grandma. They are actually first cousins. 
And it's kind of funny because in my dad's family, there are so many kids, 12 children, that it's hard enough to keep track of your siblings, let alone all of your cousins, even your first cousins. So they had a little reunion there and they were able to share in these special experiences with family. So those were two fun coincidences having to do with my family ancestor, Newell Knight, and my husband's family ancestor, the Butler family. And this was the same day that I was exploring this Kirtland Temple celestial signs concept. And then that prompted me to look up those names. So that's how I found this in the line of planets, Butler and Newell. And I just love this name right here in the middle, Sama. So in Doctrine and Covenants 128.11, it says, Now the great and grand secret of the whole matter and the summum, the summum bonum of the whole subject that is lying before us consists in obtaining the powers of the holy priesthood. You can see right here that Sama is like the sum summary, the chief point. And summum is the top summit, the, the sum of all things. And we have Sam here. So that first missionary, the Book of Mormon, that was owned by him. And Butler, the first mass healing of the people by Joseph Smith and that cloak remnant. And then Newell, the first ever miracle performed by Joseph Smith. So this beautiful depiction in the heavens reminds me of those beautiful blessings and miracles that pour forth when we go to the house of the Lord through the living waters of Jesus Christ as we are granted this beautiful gift and powers of the Holy Priesthood. So I found this historical account of Joseph Smith and Sidney as seers as they received visions and you can see their names here canst thou bind the sweet influences of pleiades or loose the bands of orion so it says the vision which is recorded in the book of doctrine and covenants section 76 was given in hiram ohio and during the time that joseph and sydney were in the spirit and saw the heavens open there were other men in the room, perhaps 12, among whom I was one during a part of the time. Probably two-thirds of the time, I saw the glory and felt the power, but did not see the vision. Many things were seen and related that are not written. I will relate as minutely as is necessary. Joseph would at intervals say, what do I see, as one might say while looking out the window and beholding what all in the room could not see. Then he would relate what he had seen or what he was looking at. Then Sidney replied, I see the same. Presently, Sidney would say, what do I see, and would repeat what he had seen or was seeing, and Joseph would reply, I see the same. This manner of conversation was repeated at short intervals to the end of the vision, and during the whole time, not a word was spoken by any other person, not a sound nor motion made by anyone but Joseph and Sidney, and it seemed to me that they never moved a joint or limb during the time I was there, which I think was over an hour, and to the end of the vision Joseph sat firmly and calmly all the time in the midst of a magnificent glory, but Sidney sat limp and pale, apparently as limber as a rag, observing which Joseph remarked smilingly, Sidney is not used to it as I am. All right, so the fifth sign. I mean, that would be enough. <laughs> that would be enough. And we had touched on this briefly, but on May 19th, 2024, Christian Pentecost Day, we had the death, the helicopter crash of the Iran president, Raisi, death. And remembering that Parley Pratt is connected to the Revelation 12 sign. 
in likeness of things on the earth. And we also, in previous videos, talked about how Pratt is connected to the 212, the Revelation 12 bookend sign on Christian Pentecost. And so on this day, you can see here that Pratt is overlapping Saturn near this depiction of the waters as they pour out upon the face of the earth. So again, how odd we have name, rice, the root word, Azerbaijan, Iran, this location. And I don't have it on this slide, but also the word, the root word of murder, murdin. And just a quick reminder on my past slides, we had talked about some other interesting things connecting to the Revelation 12 sign. So if you think of 12 forwards and backwards to 12, and you think of um, Netanyahu as a figurehead of the Jews, and his birthday was 212 days before May 19th. And we also have a common figurehead of the Gentiles. And his birthday is 212 days after this Pentecost day crash. So Christian Pentecost perhaps hints that the times of the Gentiles are being fulfilled. We do see a lot of geopolitical restructuring and posturing right now. And we know that the helicopter that crashed was a Bell 212 that is powered by a Pratt and Whitney Canada motor. Pratt served his mission in Canada and Whitney is linked to the Kirtland Temple. The Whitney store is where they received the inspiration to build the Kirtland Temple. And that story is very amazing too. And it involves visions and direct instructions of how to build it. So here, just to show you quickly how Parley Pratt is connected to the Revelation 12 sign in another aspect. So he is actually the one that wrote hymn number one, which is the morning breaks. And to early church members, this idea of the sun breaking through clouds, this also reminds me of just the sign of the son of man, the morning breaking. So the sun breaking through clouds symbolize the dawning of the restoration and the coming of gospel light to illuminate a dark earth. It is little wonder then that sunstones were featured prominently on the Nauvoo temple. So above each sun are two hands holding trumpets. Again, to me, links this concept of the Revelation 12 sign and the Feast of Trumpets holiday, heralding the dawning of the gospel in this dispensation. Again, that reminds me of the sign of the Son of Man, the dawning of the light and the sun as it rises. And Parley Pratt is the one who wrote the hymn, The Morning Breaks, which is based off of this imagery. So I've shown this on other videos, but just a quick reminder, we had our Feast of Trumpet sign in the heavens with the stars, the depiction of the birth of the child was the actual planet Jupiter that circled in the womb area for nine months and then was born on born as it appeared in the heavens on September 23rd, 2017. And then the next, the Feast of Trumpets, Revelation 12 sign that happened again was last year in 2023. It is not on this chart, but this year in 2024, on Feast of Trumpets, we have another sign in the heavens, which is a solar eclipse over Argentina, Chile, and Easter Island, and all these other interesting things on this midpoint day, which I won't go into right at this moment. But we also have these events with the temple closing. So the temple closed. That was on... Now, uh, let's see, March 18th was the day of the earthquake, and it was actually March 25th that it closed. And then 
March 25th that the Kirtland Temple opened. I don't have all that on that chart, but let's move on to sign number six. We have the Feast of Weeks and Elder Anderson blows a shofar in Argentina. He's meeting with a Jewish rabbi. And it's on this same day that the President Packer prophecy is fulfilled, according to Church News. So the Church News is announcing that this President Packer prophecy has been fulfilled. And it was about these temples that were being built. And we have all of this horn imagery while Elder Anderson is blowing a shofar. And in order to see this all, you can see weeks, as in Feast of Weeks. You can see the word horn at the foot of the horned ram. And just watch my previous video for more details on that and how that is linked possibly to, again, this idea of the times of the Gentiles being fulfilled. That's just a guess on my part. I don't know. But it seems to point to that in my mind. So sign number seven, and this is the final one. And there are actually some more, but these are just seven that I am discussing today. So we have uh, 13 days before Hebrew Pentecost, the church puts out 13 new hymns. So we did a challenge where we were going to listen to each of those new hymns every day. And the last hymn, song number 13, was Star Bright. And so I found it pretty cool that on Hebrew Pentecost, so the beginning that evening on June 11th, 2024, I just looked up, Googled what is happening in astronomy. It said the moon will be near Regulus, the brightest star. So Star Bright in the constellation Leo the Lion. So the Lion of Judah is a symbol of Jesus Christ. And I didn't include this on my other videos, but there is only one minor planet that has the word bright in it, this bright spring, and it is right there on this star bright too. So the name of this star at the heart of the lion is called Regulus. So we have the moon, we have bright, and here in this beehive, if you think of beehive as a symbol of the church, you have this minor planet, Feast, then the original child minor planet that was in the birthplace of the woman last year on this day is in the wings of the eagle. And that is a part of the Revelation 12 imagery. It says that she will be given wings. The church, the people of the church will be given wings. And I love how Elder Neil Anderson, he said, to help navigate daily challenges, he invites individuals to hold divine images, scriptures, and hymns in their minds. And that's what this beautiful imagery does. And so around this same time, we also have President Nelson reminding us that his 100th birthday is coming up. And he gives us a challenge, a 100-day challenge, and he puts it out 100 days before his 100th birthday. And President Nelson's 100th birthday is on 9-9-2024. So our prophet, the heart doctor, who loves the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ, and we look at the heart of the lion, the name of the star is Regulus, and we have a minor planet called Rise. Also, all these clusters of the word joy and love having to do with the heart. And right in the sun, Gloria, we have love and joy and Russell and Joyce Gates and Venus here, right in the arm of the woman. So that, to me, just looks like some beautiful celestial art, like a birthday card for a prophet. So in my mind, star bright will always be connected to the star regulus. And you can't see it in this because Mercury is stacked in there so tight, but we have Mercury and Rise stacked on top of regulus. And you can go to Stellarium and check this out for yourself. It's pretty amazing and beautiful.
And so President Nelson, he gave his 100 day challenge to leave the 99 and go after the one. And in Matthew chapter 18, verses 12, it says, How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if it so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Love how just a couple verses after that, it's connected to signs in heaven and earth. It says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I guess not particularly about signs, but about the powers. So we think of the powers of the priesthood that bind and loose on earth. And then as we go to this scripture about Orion, we have this connection of loosing and binding the bands of Orion. It says, canst thou loose the bands of Orion is a phrase from Job 38, 31 in the Bible. Some ancient Jewish and modern Christian commentators believe that the phrase refers to Orion's influence on human affairs, especially on vegetation and seasons. For example, Orion's rising shortly after sunset may indicate the approach of storms when cold restrains plant life. In this context, loose the bands of Orion could possibly mean loose the restraining influence in winter. So there's some astronomical poetry of Job's day. And this kind of reminded me of in Matthew 24, 20 about winter and the coming of the son of man. It says, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And it says, for then shall be great tribulation. So this connection of winter and for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So this is a great scripture about the signs. In Matthew 16, 2, he says, Can ye not discern the signs of the times? He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? So there's this admonition from Christ himself, too, we should be able to discern these signs. We should at least try. And it says, those who love his appearing. So this is a quote from Bruce R. McConkie. He says, many revelations speak of the signs which shall precede our Lord's return. Others tell of the tragic yet glorious events which shall attend and accompany his return to earth. All this is preserved in holy writ so that men will be led to prepare themselves for the day of the Lord. The day when he shall take vengeance upon the ungodly and pour forth blessings upon those who love his appearing. Now, all these signs in the heaven are great, wonderful, beautiful, but we also have to remember our foundations and those most important things and not solely focus on these things. I know if you just watch my YouTube channel, it seems like it might seem like I'm overly focused on these things, but honestly, I give up a lot of my sleeping hours, extra time, entertainment time to work and to study. Um, but the majority of my time is spent as a mother and a wife. I have five children. I'm the young women's president and I am currently seeing more conversions and miracles than ever with this rising generation. There is a reason why the prophet is focused on the rising generation. The best signs are the conversions that we often see as members of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now, this is a picture. I cut out the faces for privacy, but I had a young woman and her parents were not for her getting baptized. But the day that she turned 18, it was on June 18th of this year. 
just a few days ago and we celebrated her golden 18th birthday with her baptism and the spirit there was amazing and fantastic and we have three more youth that are wanting to get baptized and a few of them have the same issue where their parents have not given permission they are coming to church all of their own accord and they are planning to do the same thing to get baptized on their 18th birthday so i am seeing the miracles and i love this quote from our prophet president nelson so this was a talk given at byu it's called the love and laws of god he said you are the children whom God chose to be part of his battalion during this great climax in the long standing battle between good and evil, between truth and error. I would not be surprised if, when the veil is lifted in the next life, we learn that you actually pled with our Heavenly Father to be reserved for now. I would not be surprised to learn that pre-mortally you loved the Lord so much that you promised to defend his name and gospel during this world's tumultuous winding up scenes. One thing is certain, you are the house of Israel. And you have been sent here to help gather God's elect. That's powerful. So let's do this challenge, this birthday gift that our prophet gave us. So this is our channel goal, daily goal through September 9th, 2024 to, as he said, reach out to the one who may be feeling lost or alone. And I just wanted to share another amazing experience really quickly. So today, or I should say yesterday, I'm recording this. Actually, it's so late that it's yesterday. So Sunday, Orthodox Pentecost. This is the last Pentecost of the year, I promise. There's all different ways of looking at it from different viewpoints. But yesterday was the Orthodox Christian Pentecost. And I had this amazing experience where I was in a ward council meeting and we were talking about doing missionary work. And I was thinking, who can I visit? And as I looked at the ward list, I saw a very unique a family name, one of my grandmother's names. And so we ended the meeting early. I had a little bit of time before church started and I raced over there and invited them to come to church and to find out if they were cousins. And it turns out that they are most likely cousins. I have not 100% confirmed it yet, but we have the same family name and the family is from the same region in Idaho. And we were both pretty excited that we are most likely related. And then I got a phone call from my mom on the same day who is still visiting my brother and went to church with him. And she sat next to somebody that was just baptized I think a week or two before she was dressed in casual clothes and she found out that this woman's last name is the same as her maiden name and they are related. They're cousins, not first cousins or anything, but they are cousins and related. So I'm seeing these family gathering Israel miracles and family history experiences and I can't express or tell all of it. And I know you guys are experiencing the same things. And if you're not, go to the temple. It is all about going to the temple and doing all those things that our prophet is exhorting us to do. So thank you for joining me today. This was a longer one, but I hope it was uplifting. In Luke 2, 14, it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Thanks for joining me at Christian Fire Poppy. Let's bloom despite the smoke and confusion and the flames of world chaos like true fire poppies. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion and inspire hope and joy in the gospel. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.